Every road has three speed limits. The first is the number on the sign. That's the number your city council wants you to drive. It's the posted speed limit. But if you've ever driven in America, you know that most people treat the sign as a minimum. It's the norm in Fort Smith and almost every other city in this country to drive a little bit over the speed limit. That's because of the second speed limit. It's what I call the natural speed limit. That's the speed you would drive if there were no speed limit signs. The speed you naturally drive is influenced by things like how wide the lanes are, the presence of trees or buildings along the side of the road, the surface of the road, or how much it curves. But have you ever been driving at the posted speed limit, in this case it's 40, and then you get passed by a maniac going really fast, only to find yourself caught up together at the next red light? That's because of what I'm calling the effective speed limit. It's the speed past which, due to equalizers that bring all the cars together, regardless of their speed, going any faster produces diminishing returns. You can drive 200 miles per hour if you want, but as long as there's a red light ahead to stop you, you might not get to your destination much faster than someone driving slower. In the same way that the natural speed limit is dependent on an individual's psychology and will be different from person to person, the effective speed limit is never going to correspond directly to a specific road, but rather the routes that individual drivers take, and variables such as acceleration, braking force, light timing, traffic congestion, all make it a very complicated number to calculate. But I talked to two statisticians about this, and they both agreed that if we can isolate the right variables, especially traffic light timing, this math can be done. But somebody qualified does need to take this on. I'm not a traffic engineer or a statistician, and if you are, and you think I'm on the wrong track, please tell me, because otherwise I want to keep pulling on this string. If the effective speed limit is real, identifying it could have huge implications. It could be a new method to determine posted speed limits, because if it's mathematically disadvantageous to go any faster than a certain speed, why would we set the speed limit any higher? It could prove that it's just as fast or faster to ride a bicycle in certain parts of the city, and therefore where to build or enhance bike infrastructure. This is especially important in states with the Idaho stop. I know this has to be the case in some circumstances because my e-bike keeps up with car traffic just fine until I come to a meandering sidewalk, debris in the bikeway, a conflict zone, or any other road hazard that exists for cyclists but not for cars. It could be used to identify or justify the placement of traffic calming tools. So I'm just an amateur, but I need help pulling on the string. It might not make sense to drive the posted speed limit, 